Are Paris's main attractions worth seeing? You might be asking yourself that question, especially if it's your first time coming to Paris. And the answer, spoiler alert, uh, is intrinsically yes. These attractions are very worth seeing. And there's a reason that everybody goes and sees them. There's a ton of history or entertainment value that might give you a great view of the city. It's worth seeing all of these. The question I think that's more important to ask is, where on the priority list should they be? If I have a limited amount of time, should I go see this or should I go see that? And how long should I spend at each one or should I go back again another time? Those are the questions that we're gonna to try to answer today as well as some tips and tricks on how to see Paris's most visited tourist attractions here in uh, the City of Light. Welcome to Paris in My Pocket's guide to are the main attractions in Paris worth it? Spoiler alert, yes, let's move on and talk about them individually. Ah, the Eiffel Tower, probably the most obvious on the list and well, for obvious reasons. The Eiffel Tower is definitely worth it once in your life and maybe just once in your life for going up. Seeing it, you can see it almost an unlimited number of times and still feel that magic bubbly in your stomach. But as far as going up it, it's a little bit of a convoluted nightmare depending on when you do it. Partially because of the new security measures, partially because when it's crowded, it is really, really crowded. If you can go at a time that it's like lower numbers of people, smaller crowds, or if you go with a tour, like with our friends over at Fat Tire, they do guided tours is walking up that can be pretty cool but otherwise I would probably say do it once in your life if you have enough time while you're here dedicate a few hours to going up and enjoying it the views are different at every level the elevator ride up is phenomenal if you want to walk the stairs up the first time also super cool you can do that to the second story but then you know I don't know there's just so many other cool views of the city and most views are best with the Eiffel Tower in them and the one thing you can't see from the Eiffel Tower is the Eiffel Tower, besides like looking straight down. Then of course you can see you're standing on it, but that's beside the point. If you do wanna go inside and you don't want to, you know, pay the money to go up it, but you do wanna get a shot from underneath or just enjoy the splendor from below, it is still free to go in. You just have to get through security. The new glass barricades, or they're relatively new at this point, are there because some guy walked under the structure with a bomb in his backpack, as far as I'm aware, and now we have to deal with this garbage. It used to be, when I first moved here, you could just walk straight under and enjoy it all to yourself. Now, you gotta get checked out before you go in. What a brave new world. Anyway, enjoy the Eiffel Tower almost to an unlimited degree. It is worth seeing a million times, going up maybe once or twice. I will say though, without the crowds, like I went last summer and that's the footage I'm gonna show you, there were hardly any crowds. We timed it just right, also COVID kinda helped and it was magical. So if you can go up without crowds, super worth it, do it twice. It's great. If there are crowds, do it once, say you did it and then just enjoy the view from somewhere else every time after that. Possibly the most famous view of the Eiffel Tower, of course, and easiest to get to by Metro, Trocadero. Hop on over, get a shot at night while it's sparkling, and then, you know, go on your way. If you don't get your tickets in advance online, according to this little sign over here, uh, the tickets are available inside once you get inside, which is good to know. Also, the Champ de Mars, this beautiful park, well, they're trying to make it beautiful again, but the park behind the Eiffel Tower is a wonderful spot to come sit and have a picnic and enjoy the tower as well. So, you know, you don't have to go up to enjoy the tower. That's kind of my point. I realize that might be my most controversial take in the whole video, but it's true. At least, it's my opinion. However, pound for pound, possibly the most beautiful, fascinating, and magical building in all of Paris is the Palais Garnier. This opera is incredible. The shows are amazing, it's beautiful, but just look at this place. Gold, marble, phenomenal. If you're gonna go see Versailles, and you should see Versailles once in your life, go see Versailles, but if you don't have time, I would check this place out because like I said, pure magic, and I think it's even better, honestly. Quality, space, sound, oh my God, I love this place. I mean, I'm not kidding. You would think that this was in Versailles, but in honesty, you won't find anything quite this spectacular in Versailles. They try, they come close, but this is this is absolute magic to me. Anyways, uh, you know, back to the big ones. I mean, this is a big one. You should, you should come see a show here. Also, one hot tip, if you wanna come to a show for cheap, you can come the day of, get some cheap seats upstairs, whatever's left over, and the nice thing is if you show up early or during intermission, you get to wander around and enjoy the place, potentially, all by yourself. Thank you, Corey, for inviting me. I think this is a pretty unique experience that I'm having right now. You might be asking yourself, is it worth it to go to the Louvre? The Louvre Museum, is it overhyped? Why would I wanna go there? Well, I mean, if you don't like art, then maybe don't come here, but if you do like art, sculptures, artifacts, history, the Louvre is a phenomenal place to go. I mean, this is a huge complex. You'll never see all of it. No matter how many times you come to Paris, there's a good chance you haven't seen all of it. 
I've already done a couple of videos on how to do the Louvre, like how to get into some of the secret entrances, things like that. It's actually, I think, my most popular video on my channel. But of course, there are some updates uh, to how to actually do the Louvre. One of the biggest ones being timed entrances. You need to go online and buy your ticket in advance, so make sure you do that. And then getting through security should be less of a problem, but as you'll see today, it is pretty crowded over there no matter what. So the secret entrances do come in handy. Also, if you wanna see the Louvre without tourists, if you'd like to see what it looks like without crowds and all the people, I also made a video that's only available to my patrons by the request of the Louvre specifically, which you would, I, that, that's a whole other story. But I went into the Louvre with one of the only living artists to have a permanent installation in the Louvre and got to see it on a Tuesday, which is when it's closed. Uh, and it was super, super cool. So if you wanna see that video, us wandering around in the Louvre, you know, without any supervision, I mean, literally no supervision. There's, we could have done almost anything while we were in there. Check that out over on Patreon. The link will be in the welcome message if you're not a patron already. And speaking of my patrons, thanks to today's Patreon producer, Sean Mykonos, my most recent patron at the uh, Wanderer level or above, which is where the Patreon producers get to come in. Thanks, man. Really glad to have you on board. Anyway, there are whole crowds of tourists coming over here. I love the Louvre. Oh, one of the other things I was gonna say is the Louvre, if you don't wanna go inside the Louvre, maybe you just wanna do like a picnic or something or check out the little birdhouse that they have here that's, I don't know what kind of birds it's housing, but it's making all kinds of noise over there. The Louvre has its own gardens in which you can uh, have a picnic, you can even bring your dog. And then of course it abuts uh, the Tuileries Gardens where your dog is not allowed and you can't ride your bike, but you can have a phenomenal picnic or a stroll around the sculpture garden. It's pretty phenomenal. Anyways, the Louvre, is it worth it? Yeah, probably every time. You can never see enough. Highly worth it. Montmartre, Sacre Coeur. Are they worth it? Yeah, super worth it. I love this place. Sacre Coeur, the nice thing is it's free. You can go in. And I think it's worth it every time personally. If you find that you can't uh, get away from the screaming Italians in the background, you can always go into Sacre Coeur where the screaming is minimized and you get a nice little wander, some spiritual space, it's lovely. I think it's worth it every time, especially for the view that you get when you come up here. You can see all of Paris, or most of it. And if you go around the corner, you can even see the Eiffel Tower from here. Artist Square, just wandering through Montmartre in general. The cemetery up here is phenomenal. Everything is really, really cool and super worth it. A couple of tips, obviously Sacre Coeur itself is free. If you walk around it to the back, you get a view that not very many people see. It's a, it's a tip that I really like to give because most people just go straight for like the Artist Square and the kind of the more touristy section on top, which is definitely worth seeing once, but what's worth seeing multiple times is Sacre Coeur. You can also find as you wander through the hill, a couple of different windmills and not only the old wooden big windmills on the hill, but that leads us to the most famous windmill at the bottom of the hill, the Moulin Rouge. Moulin Rouge, the bane of the prudish and the local alike. You'd be surprised how many of us have never actually seen this show, even after living here for many years. I took a number of friends to check this out because is it worth it? Well, I didn't want to leave it just up to me. I figured uh, we could democratize this one a little bit and see what people thought. Also, even if you don't want to see the show, don't forget to take Metro Line 2 to Blanche. You can check it out. If you're interested in seeing more about Moulin Rouge and like the behind the scenes a little bit, let me know. Not guaranteeing I can do anything about that, but if I can, uh, we'll see what happens. Oh, hello, Jay Swanson's people. How are you? Good to see you again. I'm back. I'm not drunk for once. <laughs> not sure? yet. So I'm on my way to the theater right now for a double show night and a bunch of my American Parisian friends are watching the second show, so I'm excited to hear their opinions and see their faces and to see them in general, but yeah, it should be a good one. I'm so excited. We're ready. You're not allowed to take any uh, photos or videos oh, during the really? show, so anything that you see definitely was not taken by me. This show is considered family friendly by the French because the French are totally okay with boobs. If your family's not okay with wait, boobs... Wait, 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 wait. There are boobs in this show. Yeah. I had no idea. Yeah, that's. I didn't want to tell you because I was hoping for the surprise. You can't. You can't be hoping for the surprise and then vlog. <laughs> Men, you're not supposed so, to listen to this part, dude. You're sat in front of me. Yeah. Selectively <laughs> hear what I'm saying. It's not appropriate for children. I want to bring my children. <laughs> children would love this. Children Harris, would love this. How do I become a mother? <laughs> there are some questionable choices. There are some questionable yeah. choices. I was gonna ask if they thought it was worth it. I didn't even have to. So. <laughs> Amber, you just had a take too. Uh, it was incredible. I knew it was gonna be amazing. It was fantastic. There were problems. There were uncomfortable moments. But I mean, it was spectacular. That's for sure. Yeah, you're, if you come to Paris and this is not part of your itinerary, you have done it wrong. Yeah. My new perspective. Don't go to the news. <laughs> <laughs> 
a couple of notes from the inside uh, that you might want to know. There's a gift shop inside as well as the gift shop that's outside. And the tickets come with champagne, and the champagne's actually pretty good. The inside is surprisingly spacious and really cool. Well done. The lighting, the vibe is phenomenal. Worth it. If you like shows, if you want to just have a great time, it's a party, do it. It's a little bit pricey, obviously. It's like 110 bucks per person. I'd say worth it. Once in your life, you gotta come. Is Notre Dame worth it? Yes. Is it available right now? Uh, not really. It's not gonna be available theoretically until 2024. Hopefully they get it done in time for the Olympics. We shall see. In the best of times, when Notre Dame is open, it is a really quick, easy visit. Even if the line looks really long, it's gonna move quickly and it's free. The history of the building is phenomenal. It is the cathedral of the city, which means it is the seat of the cardinal. And it is at the very, I mean, it is the heart of Paris. It's on the island that Paris is founded on. And it is just very, very important to all of us. Even though you can't go to it right now and for the next few years, it does still provide some amazing pictures. Most of which are exclusively gonna be from the left bank or the south side of the river. From behind the church, as I am right now, you're gonna get better light in the morning. And in front of the church, you're gonna get better light in the evening. Whether you take a shot from Place Saint-Michel or one of these bridges down the river. If you have a longer lens, it's really nice to get some distance from the church, get some context around it. And then if you want to go closer to the church, even though you can't go all the way up to it to see it and touch it and taste it, if that's your thing, the nice thing is that it is surrounded by some wonderful displays right now that give a little bit of the history, some art, there's some modern touches on it, as well as around the side, you're going to see a nice little display. It kind of gives the history of the fire and the progress that they're making in restoring the church. Really hope that it gets restored quickly because we miss it a lot. I love it. It is one of my favorites. I go there all the time, like I said. Is it worth it? Yes. Is it worth it every time? Absolutely. freaking lutely I miss this church. I can't wait for it to come back. Eric the Trump, is it worth it? Of course, I love this place. Is it worth it more than once? Also, of course, going up maybe just once, maybe twice, but coming and visiting it every time, I mean, it gives you nice warm feelings on the inside, doesn't it? The way you access it is on either side. If you can see the flat face, of the Arc, you know that you're on the right side, whether it's the Champs-Elysees or Grand Armée. On either side, there's a stairwell going underneath, leads to a tunnel, and that tunnel at the very middle is where you come up in the middle. So don't, don't go running through traffic to get out there. Buy your tickets online in advance. I don't even know if you can buy your tickets at the ticket office anymore. I was gonna find out today, but due to some technical error, uh, they're not letting anybody in today. So I wasn't able to actually even see what was going on. So unfortunately, no, no fresh footage, but I'll see if I can find some old footage for you to see what the view looks like from on top. It is absolutely one of my favorite views of the city. And as uh, you might know from the Eiffel Tower, even though the Eiffel Tower has some phenomenal views, the best views of the city have the Eiffel Tower in them. And this is one of the best ones for that for sure. The ticket that got me nowhere cost me 13 euros, and uh, I will try again someday, I'm sure. But hey, we've made an honest effort today. If you want to go up the Arc de Triomphe, highly worth it. If you just want to go out underneath, it's free. You can skip the line and go up the stairs, downstairs, uh, assuming that the doors are open, and just wander around in the roundabout for a little bit and, uh, you know, get your shot. Of course, if you're brave like me and you want to take a bike out into the middle, that is a way of doing it on the surface. Uh, I'm not going to recommend you do that, but, you know, I like doing it that way. Also, the standard tip that I give everybody is avoid the Champs-Elysees. It's overcrowded. There are tons of people there all the time. This side's getting more popular, but generally there are way fewer people on the other side on Avenue de la Grande Armée. And you'll get some phenomenal photos, especially in the afternoon. The sun is going to be behind you. And uh, yeah, come check out the Arc de Triomphe. Worth it? Yes. Worth it multiple times? Definitely. Bad timing. Well, this is a good reminder that sometimes you're just going to run into problems when you're trying to go to a local site and uh, Huh? Roll punches. Thanks for watching Paris My Pockets. Are Paris's main attractions worth it? The answer obviously being yes. If you're looking for more tips and tricks on how to get around town, make sure to check out the rest of the channel. Uh, subscribe. Look at what's going on in Paris with us. And of course, check out ParisMyPocket.com for all the guides, but especially my guide to how to get around Paris, what to see, what to do. It's the only guide you need to have the best time in Paris you can imagine. And uh, of course, thanks to my patrons for making this all possible. You should see their names scrolling along the side of the screen there, which is why I'm standing in front of the fancy background. This is actually uh, not the Arc de Triomphe you're thinking of, but it is an Arc de Triomphe, also built by Napoleon in the Louvre. Make sure you check it out. Super cool. And last tip, right by the secret entrances uh, to the Louvre. A couple of them, if you want to check that out in my How to Do the Louvre video, which I referenced earlier. See you around.